All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's look at example five. And on this example, they actually give you sample data and not the summary statistics. All right, so go ahead and pause and read through this, make any notes, and then we'll come back here in a second. Okay, so now that you got a chance to read through that, um, let's go ahead and take a look and say, again, Consumer Reports tests 11 brands of vanilla yogurt and found that these numbers of calories per serving. So again, we got 11 different brands of yogurt. Um, a diet guide claims that you will get an average of more than 120 calories from a serving of vanilla yogurt. We're going to test that at a significant level, significance level, alpha equal 0.05. What does your sample data indicate? So, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we're going to do is, like, just like we always have, we're going to determine what parameter we're using. And again, we're going to use a population mean. Okay, and then we're going to set up the null and alternative hypothesis. So the null would be that the average amount per serving would be 120 calories. Remember, the null always contains the condition of equality. The alternative comes from the claim by the diet guide. It says that it's an average of more than 120 calories, that the mean is greater than 120 calories. And then part C is the significance level, and that is going to be at a significant level of 0 0.05, okay? Now, we need to look at the requirements for us to be able to do this. So we don't know the shape of the population. It doesn't say anything about this. We've only got 11 brands of vanilla yogurt, so we've got to see, does that sample form does that sample have any outliers? Is there any, uh, is it, you know, could it be uniform, you know, or maybe just fairly bell-shaped? So we're going to need to graph that. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead, we'll go to our stat app. I'm going to highlight these first so I can just copy and paste them. Not that there's that many of them. So we're going to go to our stat app. Now, since I'm graphing the data, I'm just going to go, this is quantitative data. So I'm going to go here. It's our own. I'm going to, you don't really need to do this, but I'm going to. And then I'm going to paste in our data values. Now, if you take a look, it doesn't, you know, it's not, it looks fairly symmetric. You look at the box plot, there's no outliers. So I think we're pretty good here. Um, I don't think we have any reason to, to think that, ladies and gentlemen, that this would not be normal, um, at least at this level. And then the other thing is, we also get our mean and our standard deviation. A mean of 132 and our standard deviation of 25.2. We can also use that as our summary statistics to help us calculate our test statistics. So 132 and 25.2. So I'm gonna keep this up here. I'm gonna go back to our, our in here. So let's look at the requirements. That would be part D. And So the dot plot, excuse me, the histogram and box plot look fairly normal. With no outliers. Now, we just have to see is, ladies and gentlemen, did it say anything about this being a simple random sample? Um, it doesn't say that, but I will tell you when Consumer Reports does its testing, they do use random samples. So we're going to assume that this was done randomly. We're going to assume that this is a simple random sample. I know we don't like to do that a lot, but I know Consumer Reports does a good job. It's a, it's a, it's a very reliable testing. Uh, they test a lot of products and their, their reputation is well known, so we're going to assume a simple random sample. Okay? 
So let's go to party now. Party, and I'm going to go to the next, uh, next slide. You don't have to draw this if you don't want to. Okay, I'm going to do it just to hopefully give you a better idea of, ladies and gentlemen, um, how things are. But to be honest with you, you don't need, ladies and gentlemen, to, uh, you don't need to draw this because one, you can get your p-value from your test statistics, you already know alpha, you can compare those without a drawing. But I'm going to do it anyway, so um, this is E, and here's our t-distribution. Remember our degrees of freedom, there were 11 in our sample size, minus 1 equals 10. And here's our center, this is our t-distribution. Now, alpha, ladies and gentlemen, alpha would go this time on the right tail because if you look at our alternative hypothesis, it says greater than 120 calories. So it's going to go on the right tail because we're going to see if our test data is strong enough to go in, to go past that level of alpha. So here's alpha, and that is 0 0.05, okay? Um, so we're good there. Where does our test statistic fall? So that becomes the next thing is, you gotta calculate our test statistic. Now, if you remember from our data, we said X bar, the average of these 11, um, Sam, these 11 uh, brands of vanilla yogurt was 132. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I did my calculations, I, I used a graphing calculator, I got 122. So it may, our calculations may be just a tad bit different, but not too much. And then the standard deviation was uh, 25.2. And on, like I said, when I did my calculations, Ladies and gentlemen, I did it. They gave you just a tad bit few more decimal places. So if we calculate our test statistic, again, we're going to take our sample mean minus our hypothesized mean <clears throat> all over the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So our, our sample mean was 132 minus our hypothesized mean, which was 120. all divided by your sample standard deviation, which was 25.2 divided by the square root, not our degrees of freedom, but our sample size, which is the square root of 11. Now, when I did this, I got 1.554. So our data, our particular um, average, ladies and gentlemen, is about one and a half standard deviations beyond what it's a that's saying that's it's a z score for the sampling distribution of sample mean of uh, sample means. So if this is our where our hypothesized mean is at, um, our ours lies about 1.554 standard deviations to the right of that. Now where is that on our graph? Well we got to calculate our p-value there. So I'm gonna use the p-value of 1.554 and I'm gonna go back to my I'm going to go back here to my stat app, and this time I'm going to go down to a T distribution. I'm going to go to find probability because we want to find a P value. And we have 10 degrees of freedom. This is a right tail or upper tail test. And I'm going to type in 1.554. Okay, so this right here, ladies and gentlemen, you notice this matches up with our test statistic right here. That's our test statistic. But right here is our p-value as a percent. We need to change it over to a, to a um, decimal, and you just do that again. If it's 7.56%, just take this and move it two places to the left. So our p-value is actually 0 0.0756, which basically means that about seven or eight, the probability of getting data, a sample more extreme than ours, would be about seven to eight out of 100. Now again, you're saying, well, that doesn't sound like a lot, but how does that compare to alpha? So I'm gonna click back out of this, 
Go back to our paper and look at it. Go back to our slide and look where we're at. Okay, so right here, alpha was only point zero point zero five. Our test statistic was at point zero seven. So it's out here. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, was where our p value was at. And it was 0 0.0756. It doesn't lie in there. So, ladies and gentlemen, even though our sample average of 132 was larger than 120, there's not, the evidence isn't strong enough to say that it is more than. In other words, this, the reason why this number differs from the actual hypothesized mean could just be due to sample fluctuations. It's not strong enough, ladies and gentlemen, to say that that um, it differs based on that the hypothesized mean might not, might not be true. So I kind of got ahead of myself. So we found our p-value from our, from our uh, stat app. And that p-value we found to be 0 0.0756. So let me look at how does that compare to alpha. Well, that p-value was greater than alpha, because remember, alpha was 0 0.05. So alpha, the idea that our data value is not as extreme as, as our acceptable rate of 0 0.05 says that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to fail to reject the null. And that's our last step here. H was writing the claim. Well, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? Now, we're not saying our sample data supports the null hypothesis that the average calories were 120, or the average calories per serving was 120 calories. We're not supporting it. The only way we could support it is if we had data from all of the entire population of vanilla yogurt. Can I contact extension 2015? Our data just says it wasn't strong enough to reject it. So, how do you write that? You just say, how do you write your final conclusion there is not sufficient evidence. Some people even say sample evidence, and you don't have to. That the average number of calories per serving of vanilla yogurt is more than Is there a kitchen staff available? Um, please call extension 2015. Okay, so we're just saying, could it be that the number of calories on average is more than 120? It could be, but our sample data wasn't strong enough to say that it was greater than 120. Could be, it might, but our sample data wasn't strong enough to say that it was. Okay, so th that's it. We got one more example and then we'll call it a day.